street of purest gold no i've never been there but i sure do want to go i'm just waiting for jesus to call me home some sweet day all the signs are now pointing to that land across the way this old world is now fading yeah. as i see my home sweet home no i've never been there but i sure do want to go <clears throat> I wonder how my mansion is really gonna be How high those walls of jasper Who will live next door to me But the only thing that matters I'll see the Savior of my soul No, I've never been there But I sure do want to go I'm just waiting for Jesus to call me home some sweet day. All the signs are now 
pointing to that land across the way. This old world is now fading as I see my home sweet home. No, I've never been there, but I sure do want to go. Well, that's so. Thank Never been there, but I sure do want to go. I want to tell you something else. I'm going to go. Yeah. The Lord fixed it where I could go. Yes, sir. Sure, I'm thankful for that. Thankful for that. All right, turn your Bibles to the book of Revelation, chapter 19. Revelation chapter 19. Prayer scripture read. I've been talking about the, uh, or at least we did last week about the coming of the Lord return for his church. And I want to pick up with this if we can and go on a little bit with today to get done. Uh, so I read about the rapture, something about the rapture last week. The last days I'd be scoffers. Yes, Walking out of the unless saying, where is the promise is coming? Right. I'll read here, this is uh, uh, when he comes into Revelation. Revelation chapter number 19 verse 11. And I saw heaven open, behold a white horse, and he that sat upon him, uh, he that sat on him was called faithful and true. And in righteousness he does judge and make war. His eyes were a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns. He had a name written that no man knew but he himself. He was clothed in a vessel dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. The armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. Out of his mouth goes a sharp sword. With it he should smite the nations. He shall rule them with a rod arm. He treadeth the winepress of the fiercest wrath of Almighty God. He hath on his vest and on his thigh a name written, King of Kings and uh, Lord of Lords. Amen. I'm proud he is King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Yes, Amen. Yes, sir. And uh, so uh, uh, let's uh, go back and pick up a pair called recap. And I don't have time to recap. I might put a boot in the tire or something. I can't get time to recap. <laughs> well, I got some more things I want to say. But I do want to get you caught up if you want in your last Sunday. Uh, while we preached about last Sunday. And uh, talk to, well, I'll say this. First of all, the next great event to take place is the rapture of the church. Amen. Amen. On God's big counter, the next thing is the rapture of the church. Amen. I don't know anything would keep him from coming back today. Right. Right. So if I wasn't ready, I'd start getting ready right now. I'd get ready Amen. today. And uh, but uh, there's two phases of his coming. He's coming to the rapture, and then in the revelations I read right here today Amen. that I'll preach mostly about. But before I do, I want to say something about the rapture. And we need to understand that, uh, that uh, in the rapture, he's coming for the saints. Right. Right. In the revelation, he's coming with the saints. Amen. In the rapture, he's coming as a thief to the unsaved. In the revelation, every eye shall see him. In the rapture, uh, uh, he's uh, coming in the eye. Not coming to earth, we're going to meet him in the eye. But in the revelation, he's coming to the Mount of Olives. Same place he left from. Setting his feet on the Mount of Olives when he comes in the revelation. Then after the rapture takes place and we'll leave out of here, Seven year great tribulation this earth like the world has never known. Amen. During that seven year tribulation, we're going somewhere to stand at the judgment seat of Christ. Right. As I preached last week. Right. Bible said so then every one of us shall give an account of himself to God. Amen. From the judgment seat, we're going on to the 
uh, marriage supper of the Lamb. Talked a little bit about that. The Bible said, I have not seen, there is not heard, neither has in the heart of man the things which God Amen. has prepared for them that love him. Right. Right. We sang the song sometime, Heaven's Jubilee. Uh -huh. I've always thought about that as being when we meet him in the air. Yeah. I'm not sure now. I've been thinking about this this week a little bit. It might be the marriage of the Lamb. Uh -huh. Be Heaven's Jubilee. Right. They sure was having the time there. Yes, sir. Yes. Bible said in Revelation chapter 19 verse 1, they all said hallelujah. Yep. Verse 2, they all said, Hallelujah. Yep. In verse 4, they said, Hallelujah. Right. In verse 6, they said, Hallelujah. Yep. The Lord God will never the rain us. Right. Right. Everybody yep. giving praise to God. Yep. Hallelujah for that. Uh -huh. But then when the marriage supper's over, we're coming back with him. I read that here in chapter 19. He said, I saw heaven open the white horse. Jesus rides out on that big white stallion. Yes. You say it don't say a stallion, but I believe it. But anyhow, he'll come on that big old white horse. Yes. And we're going to be on white horses following him back down Amen. here. Amen. I mentioned last week some of the old timers used to say I've got a one way ticket. They didn't know but they've got a round trip ticket. We're going and we're coming back. Hallelujah. I said I'm going to make a Methodist shot right there. I want to say a word or two about the scripture about him coming back in the Revelation. There's different scriptures for different th different things, and we need we just need to rightly divide them. That's all. That's right. That's right. When he comes to Revelation, Thessalonians one seven said, "In flame and fire, taking vengeance upon them that that uh, uh, know not the truth, uh, 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 reject the truth, and believe not the gospel." Right. He's going to take vengeance upon them in flame and fire. Right. Right. And then not only that, Revelation 1 and 7 said when he come back again, every eye shall see him. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Everybody ain't going to see him when he come to rapture. Nope. When he come to Revelation, every eye will see him. That's right. Jude said, verse 14, it said, uh, Enoch, the seven from Adam. Get this. I, I wish I could tell you. What's, but uh, the Lord made, there's different Enoch's in the Bible, see. Right. And the Lord made it very clear it's the seventh Enoch from Adam. Right. He said he prophesied that he said, and said, Behold, the Lord cometh with 10,000 of his saints. Amen. And you change that song to 10 million. 10,000 is right to start with. Right, right. 10,000 means totality in Bible language. Yeah, so what it said, he's coming with all of his saints. Yes, sir. All his saints yes, is coming back with him. And uh, so I got to get right on here. But he's coming back to put down sin. Yep, Satan once and for all. Amen. Yeah, now, if you look here in verses, uh, I know you got your Bibles open, and Brother Stanley used to say, keep your Bibles open. I don't care if you keep them open, I hope you got them open now. But verse 20 and 21, I'll read, get you what I'm saying. It said, the beast was taken, and with him the false prophet, that wrought miracles before them, which had seen them, that received the mark of the beast, and worshiped the image. These both were cast alive into the lake of fire burning with brimstone. Now the beast and the false prophet, that's the end of them. They're in the lake of fire. Right. Right. Verse 21. And the remnant was slain with the sword of him that sat upon the hole, which sword proceeded out of his mouth. All the fowls were filled with their flesh. That word remnant means the rest of them. 
means the leftover. Right, right. So everybody that hadn't been slain up to now is going to be slain. Right. The wicked is put out. Yeah. The beast and the false prophets of the fire, rest of the wicked slain, and they but one loot to bother us, and that's the devil himself. Yeah. Amen. But he ain't going to last long. Look at verse 20. Yeah. Chapter 20 of me. Chapter 20. So I saw an angel come down from heaven having to kill the bottom of his spear. The great chain in his hand. He laid all on the dragon, that old serpent, which is called the devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years, cast him in the bottom of his pit, and uh, shut him up. Phil mentioned something about this Wednesday night when he's teaching. He's kind of on this line a little bit. And it said he believed he shut him up. I believe he shut him up too. Oh, yeah. The devil, he never will shut up as long as we're on this road serving the Lord. He'll always give us a hard time. Right. But thank God on this day, the Lord's coming down with a key to the bottom of his pen and a great chain in his hand. He's going to uh, open that pen and put him in and set a seal on it. He'll see the nation no more till the thousand years is full of him. Amen. Now, I'm proud that, listen to me, all the way from Genesis when he deceived Adam and Eve and and uh, he's been deceiving people. Been lying to people. John chapter 8 says the liar. He's the father of the liar. Right. And uh, the Bible said be sober. Be vengeful because your adversary, the devil, just like a roaring lion walking about, seeking whom he may devour. Right. But... Uh, the Lord took care of that problem yeah. when he came down. You say, how you know it's the Lord? I know it is. He said in Revelation 1 and 18, I'm he that liveth and was dead, alive forevermore. Amen. Yep. And I have the keys of death and of hell. Right. He's got the key. Yep. So he's going to shut him up. Thank God for a thousand years. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's right. And uh, so let's... Uh, Go on here just a little further. Look at verse 6 in Revelation chapter 20. The Bible said, uh, Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection. Mm -hmm. On such a second death had no power. Now let me try to help you with this and explain it to you. If you don't know, some of y'all know much about it as I do, but some of you might not know. But uh, there's three parts of the first resurrection. Don't ever forget that now. You get confused if you don't get that straight. Three parts of the first resurrection. There were three parts of the harvest in the Old Testament economy. There was the first fruit. There was the main harvest. And then there's the gleanings. Right. Yep. Right. I remember when I was growing up and they let the poor people go through and get the gleanings there what the farmer left over and poor folk go through gets clean. I, ain't get, I can't get in that today. I ain't got time to get in that. But put this down. Corinthians 15 and 23. It said, uh, it's talking about the resurrection. And it said, Christ, the first fruit. Yep. Then they that are Christ that is come. Right. And then cometh the end. The first fruits when Jesus got up. Yes, sir. Main harvest, Thessalonians 4. The gleaning is Revelation chapter 20. Yep. Tribulation, sir. Right. Now watch this. I want you to know I'm preaching the Bible. In Matthew chapter 27, and I believe it's verse 52, the Bible said that the graves were open. That's the reason I know the cemetery is going to look like a new ground when the Lord comes back. Yeah. It's not they're going to slip out of the grave, but his grave is going to bust wide up. Right. Right. Amen. The, I didn't know that for a long time. I read that one that I figured, Lord, help me to figure all that out. But anyhow, Amen. it said the graves were open. Yeah. And many bodies of the saints appeared in the holy city yeah. after his resurrection. Yeah. Yep. That's the first fruit. Yep. 
One preacher said the Lord got up, grabbed a handful of first fruits, and went to the city. Amen. Well, they say in the, in the, when they'd gather crops, they'd go out there and get the first fruit to see if it's all right and ready to, and whether it's ready to harvest or not. And I'll tell you, them first fruits checked out A plus. Yeah. More than that. Yeah. Hallelujah. Then the main harvest, Thessalonians chapter 4, the Lord himself shall ascend from heaven with a shout. The voice of the and the trump of God, and the dead in Christ arise first, then we which are alive and remain shall be caught together in the cloud to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. That's the main harvest. Laying into tribulation, saints, in Revelation chapter 20, and, uh, the Bible said the rest of the dead live not again till a thousand years were finished. Mm -hmm. But I got to get on now. Remember, remember, three parts of the main harvest are the first, first resurrection, three parts of the first resurrection. First fruit when Jesus rose, main harvest when the church is raptured out, gleanings, Revelation chapter 20. And then, let's look at something else here. The Bible said, uh, yeah, yeah, let me show you that. You got your Bibles there? Yes, sir. All right, look at it. Revelation chapter 20 and verse number 2. Start with verse 2. Now, verse 1 don't say it, but start with verse 2 and all the way through verse 7. Six verses right on straight. says 1,000 years of 1,000 years a thousand years, a thousand years, a thousand years, in six verses right on strike. Some people say, I don't believe in the thousand year reign. Well, you just don't believe the Bible. That's all I do. I'm, I'm not being blocked upon by Miss Helen. Right. Right. The Lord don't have to say anything but one time yep. for it to be true. Amen. It's amazing here he put in six verses right on strike. A thousand years, a thousand years, a thousand years. And of course, that's what millennium means, 1,000 years. Right. Most everybody knows that. Getting back to my text last week, it ain't my text, but I did read that verse over in Peter chapter 3. It said, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord's a thousand years. Yeah. A thousand years is one day. Yeah. So listen, it was uh, from the creation to uh, Creation of the flood was approximately 2,000 years. From the flood to Christ was born, about 2,000 years. And it's been 2,000 years since Christ was born. Add that up right quick. Everybody's smart enough to add that up. Right. That's 6,000 years. Right. Right. And the Lord created everything six days, and on the seventh day, He rested from all His work. Yeah. Well, that seventh thousand years, it ain't anything in the world but the Sabbath. It's, it, rep it represents that Sabbath. It'll be a time of peace here on right. earth. For 1,000 years, amen. Right. Amen, preacher. That's right. Hallelujah. That's right. Yeah, I'm preaching right out of the Bible to you, damn yes, sir. And uh, you say, how it's going to be? I don't know. I don't know. I, kinda, I try to imagine sometimes how it's going to be. But I don't know. And we all try to imagine that. But I want to read, read to you. I'm going to read to you what it's been prophesied in the Old Testament uh, just about how much, uh, uh, I mean, kind of what things will be like. Let me read to you a little here in Isaiah. If you don't, don't, don't turn, just jot it down. If you don't jot it down, I'm going to read to you. In Isaiah chapter 11, verse number 6, it said, The wolf also shall dwell with the lamb, and the leopard shall lie down with the kid, and the calf, and the young lion, the fatlings together. And a little child shall lead them. The cow and the bear shall feed. Their young ones shall lie down together. And the lion shall eat straw like an ox. And that uh, won't be bloodthirsty no more. That lion just eat. It said straw here. We would call it hay in our day. It's the same yeah. thing. Yeah. And that, uh, that lion will eat hay with the cows. Amen. You say, I don't believe it. I'm just reading out of the Bible. That's right. Sucking child shall play on the hole of the asp, 
And the weaned child shall put his hand upon the cockatrice's den. And they shall not hurt and destroy in all the holy man. For the earth shall be full of knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. Right. Lord, you're talking about time of peace. Yes, sir. Brother Fred used to sing that song, There'll be peace in the valley for me. Right. Woo, hallelujah. Amen. It's a time of peace. Amen. Let me read a little more over here. This is what I'm going to read now if I can find it. It's chapter 35. Same book, Isaiah. Chapter number 35. You hear it is right here. Yeah. It said, Then shall the lame man leap as an heart. We can't get around too good down here. Don't worry about it. Some of these days we're going to leap like that heart. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Tongue of the dumb shall sing, for the wilderness shall break, wilderness shall uh, waters break out and streams in the desert. Parched ground shall become a pool, the thirsty land springs of water. Right. In, the, in, the, in the habitation of, habitation of uh, the dry, where each lie shall be grass, region rush. Highway shall the bear and the way and shall call the way of holiness. The unclean shall not pass over it, but he shall be for those of the wayfaring man. No fool shall there there. Listen, no lion shall be there, nor the rabious beast shall come upon it. It shall not be found there, but the ransom are redeemed, and the Lord shall walk there. The ransom of the Lord shall return and come to Zion with songs and everlasting joy upon their heads. And they shall obtain joy and gladness and sorrow. And signs shall flee away. Amen. That's a little bit of what's going to be like. Yeah. Yeah. You kids, I'm going to tell you something. You can tell them old preacher here at Canaan don't know much, but I'm going to tell you this. When we get to that millennia, if you see a big old lion or a tiger or something out there that you like the looks of, real pretty, you can get it for a pet if you want to. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. All right, you go. You can play, it won't hurt you. Right. Say, you crazy. No, I'm not crazy. I'm reading out the Bible. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Reading out the Bible. <laughs> Let me say something. Amen. Good preacher. Come on. Did you know the ground's going to bring forth so plentiful and abundantly during that millennia that uh, the plowman. It's going to overtake the reaper. Yep, right. It's going to bring forth so much fruit they can't get it together before they come through plowing it again. Right, yeah. Right. Well, you say, you mean we're going to be doing something? I hope so. Yeah. yeah. I never did like this set around twiddling my thumbs. I hope we'll be doing something. Yeah. But you need to worry. Temperature will be perfect. Yep. Yeah. Won't be no weeds, won't be no grass. Right. We'll just plow be a plow. Yeah. I, 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 I used to tell Scott when he was living. I say, Scott, it might be like this. I don't know what it will, but I like to think that, so don't bother me, I'll be all right. I tell Scott, I say, Scott, during that millennium, I might be sitting down at the end of the road on one of the big tractors or about a, a 28, 24 foot cutting hard behind it, sitting there. You'll come down there on a combine cutting about 48 foot at a time, trying to get that crop. You say, he'll say, what you waiting on? I say, I'm waiting on you to get the crop together where I can plow some more. I'm telling hey, hey, they things ahead for the children of God. Yeah. It's more than just the Lord coming back yeah. and the sheep's on the right and the goats on the left yeah. and the sheep going to heaven, the goats going to hell. There's a whole lot of things going to happen before the end of the world. Amen. Now the end of the world's going to come all right. But a lot of things going to happen before that. Yes, sir. Wait, I'm not telling you to wait and get saved anytime you want to. The Lord might come today. Yeah. And when he comes, you don't have another opportunity to get saved. Right. So you've been sitting here hearing me preach. And everybody's had that opportunity, they don't have an opportunity more. But I'm just preaching to you how it's going to be. I, yeah. I really believe. Yes, sir. I really believe it's going to be like it. 
Might not be exactly like I said it, but that's a, I'm just trying to give you an idea. Yep. Good. Where to get my glasses out here? Let me, let me get these off here. Find something else to preach about. I don't preach very long. I, I could. I feel good. And yeah. I feel good. And I could preach to one today. I'm not going to turn out. I mean, I just feel like I could. If I'm not preaching hard, I'm just kind of taking it slow, you know. I preach a lot. <laughs> I got to get back to the Bible. Yeah, look at it. Look at it. Right here. And uh, you understand that's going to be a thousand year reign of Christ, don't you? I hope you understand that part now. But look at uh, verse, 11, verse 7 in Revelation chapter 1. And when the thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison. You say, why? Well, all them that's born during the thousand year reign, during the millennium, they ain't never been tested and tried. And everybody be tested and tried. Were they going to serve the Lord or follow the devil? Maybe. Right. And so that's the reason he'd be loosed a little season. To go out. I'm going to read these verses. These other verses tells you that. I'm just right. verse, verse number eight said, And shall go out to do what? Same business he's always been in. Mm -hmm. Shall go out to deceive the nation which are in the four corners of the earth. Gog and Magog to gather them together to battle, the number of whom is the sand of the sea. And uh, they went up on the breast of the earth, compassed the camp of the saints. That's all they'll ever get done is compassed the camp of the saints. They ain't going to bother the saints. For the Bible said at this particular time, Jerusalem safely inhabited. Amen. And uh, so they ain't going to bother the saints. Right. And compassed the camp of the saints about and the beloved city. And fire, watch this, fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them. And so uh, there's going to be a battle. It's Gog and Magog is going to be a battle. Mm -hmm. right. And uh, I've, uh, I've uh, studied a little bit on this. And I, 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 this will help you. I tell you a lot of things will help you. But this will really help you in studying Revelation, trying to write and divide it. There's two great battles here in the and the first is the battle of Armageddon and it starts over in I was looking this week and I think I got this right it starts over in chapter 16 and goes through 18 and maybe a little 19 there's where the great battle of Armageddon is, and it's a battle of blood put that down now battle of Armageddon is a battle of blood and the blood's going to run through the horse's bridle for almost 200 miles. But the Bible, the Bible don't tell us 200 miles, but you study it, you'll find I'm right. For the horse's bridle for about 200 miles. And that's the Battle of Armageddon. And it winds up over here uh, in 1890. And then this Battle of Gog and Magog is a battle of fire. Fire fell down from heaven, consumed a whole crowd, all of them. Maybe. And uh, so uh, it's a battle of fire. It's after the millennium. Very easy to see that. I'll get to read the Bible, find out. But it's after the millennium. Amen. Battle of Armageddon, battle of blood, is about, it's the battle before the millennium, right? And now. I can say more about that, but I, I don't have time. I guess I'm going to take time. But uh, you say, uh, what about Satan being loose? What, what's the purpose of that? I don't understand all about it. But I've already said, the people born during this millennium, they, they've never tested and tried where they'll follow the Lord and follow the devil. And I think uh, everybody has equal opportunity. I think the Lord gives everybody that opportunity. Whether they're going to love him and follow him and serve him, or they're going to follow the devil. Now, I'm not saying for sure, but 
it just seems to me like the majority will fall out to Satan. I don't know. That's just guessing. It. That's not scripture. But uh, anyway, but they're tried and tested. And then after that, right here, here's the doom of Satan. The doom of Satan. He's deceived. He's destroyed. He's wrecked homes. He's called children to suffer. Shrimp people, wounded people, all through the years. But this is the end of it. Look at Revelation 20 and 10. And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone with a beast and a false prophet all. Shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. And so that's the doom of Satan. Beast and false prophets already been in the lake of fire. Right. Wicked's been put out. Now the devil himself is cast into the lake of fire. And that gets us down to the final judgment. And uh, I guess I won't get into that. I wouldn't have time. I don't know. I might preach a little about that. I might preach a little bit about the final judgment. Ten minutes on the final judgment. Ten minutes on our final home next week. I don't know if I will or not. I may, may quit right here. But if I, if I do preach it, only time to be what uh, but look at verse 11. I'm just going to read it to you and I'm going to close. Verse 11. I saw a great white throne, him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and heaven fled away. There was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great. Now the word dead represents the unsafe, okay? Right. I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God. Books from another book was open, which is the book of life. The dead were judged out of those things which are written in the books according to their works. The sea gave up the dead which were in it. Death and hell delivered the dead which were in it. And they were judged every man according to their works. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. Whoso was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. How sad, how sad, how sad. But the blessed thing for us that saved Talks about the second death there in verse 14. But the Bible said about us, the second death hath no power. Right. No power. Amen. In case I don't preach on this anymore, I, I want to say this. I believe we'll be at this great white throne judgment, judgment of the wicked. I believe safe folks will be there. I believe the Lord will be, well, I know the Lord will be sitting on the throne. Right. And wherever he's at, we'll be around pretty close. Yes, sir. From the time the rapture takes place, we'll be around pretty close. So I believe we'll be there. Not to be judged. Don't have any power on us. As far as judgment's concerned, we've done been judged the judgment seat of Christ. And we'll just come back with the Lord. And, uh, but uh, anyhow, I believe we'll be there. And see those who would not could have won to the Lord. Amen. If we'd have been more faith and lived right and done right, right witnessed right. right. And we'll have to see them judged and cast in the lake of fire. Yes, sir. There'll be a lot of tears shed there. Yes, sir. This white throne judgment. There'll be a lot of them shed to judgment seat of Christ. Yes, sir. But possibly there'll be more shed. I ain't never said that before, but I guess it's right. Probably more shed at the white throne judgment, judgment of the wicked, when we see these people cast in the lake of fire. You're right. But after that's over, the next chapter said the Lord will wipe away all tears from our eyes. Now, right. that'll, be, that'll be the end of the tears. Amen. Amen. But I believe we'll be present to this judgment. Yes, sir. Maybe be a witness. Again, have to be a witness against him. Right. But the Bible says, Not one says to me, Lord, Lord, go into the kingdom of heaven. But see the do the will of my Father, which is him. Said many say, Lord, I have not we prophesied that they've cast out death all these men in one. He'll say, I never knew you depart from me, the everlasting right. Father. How sad, how sad. But I hope I've said something today to help you a little bit understand this subject about the second coming of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Not all today, but the days that's passed. And I don't know anything I enjoy preaching on anymore. You can tell that, can't you? Good preaching, preaching. I love preaching on the second coming of the Lord. Good And uh, He is coming. He's right. I preached on it for many years, but he's coming. That's right, right. Yes, sir. It's as real today as it was when I started preaching on it. In fact, it's more real. We're closer. 
to the end of the journey. You're right about that. He's coming back. Amen. Coming back. Father in heaven, I want to thank you for letting us be here today and saying pray and preach a little while. I thank you, Lord, for the presence of God and so sweet and real and blessed our presence today. Without him, it's all in vain. So I do thank you, Lord, for being with us. Help us, Lord. And uh, so I pray you bless every person on the side of our voice. For us, what's not saved, speak to the heart about getting saved. And Lord, for those that are saved, they just want to be a better Christian, live closer to God, more dedicated to God, and look for the Lord to come back. There's so many, many things, good things ahead for the children of God. I know it's a little rough down here sometimes. We have burden, disappointments, trying times in life, sickness and pain and suffering. But thank God one day after a while. It's going to be blessed forevermore. And I'm thankful. I'm thankful we have this hope. We have this hope in the Lord that things will get better. And all these blessings we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Amen.